Denver 7 investigates a high school security guard accused of sexual assault on a student. If it was my kid, I would have wanted to know what happened. But one of the state's most respected school district kept parents in the dark for more than three months. What they're doing is they're trying to push it under the rug. An insider so disgusted, he turns to Denver 7 investigates. I think they should say they messed up. And tonight, Denver 7 asks, why were parents kept in the dark? Chief investigative reporter Tony Kowaleski has been digging into what happened and why. Tony? Exactly, and tonight we put decisions made by the Cherry Creek School District under our investigative microscope. Information we've uncovered raises serious questions about why after police arrested a security guard for more than three months, parents were kept in the dark. I think parents should have been told exactly what had happened. He's an employee familiar with the secrets kept inside Grandview High School. What was your reaction when you first heard it? I was disgusted. He wants to keep his job. He's asked us to disguise his identity and alter his voice. I saw them hiding the truth. You watched all of this unfold in the district. Was this a cover-up? Oh, yeah. There was no question this was a form of cover-up, and they wanted to keep this as low key as possible. Our investigation questions why the district waited 110 days to notify parents that security guard Broderick Lundy was arrested on a felony charge of sexual assault of a child and why district leaders did not know about this troubling police report. Why parents were kept in the dark until Denver 7 broke the story. In a separate case, it's all new at 10, we have confirmed the arrest of another employee with the Cherry Creek School District. According to the arrest report, Grandview High Security Guard Broderick Lundy connected with a minor student through social media. Later, the two exchanged nude images and during an interview, the report says the security guard admitted to having sexual contact with the student. One of your district employees, a security guard, gets arrested for sexually assaulting a student yes and you don't tell parents for more than three months that's correct cherry creek superintendent harry bull sat down with denver seven the allegations in the case for his first on-camera interview since the controversy broke there are some that say you kept this a secret this was a cover-up were you covering this up Tony, it's hard to cover up something that you report to the police. No, I, I don't believe that this was a cover-up. It was a decision around communicating or not communicating. As you sit there now, is there part of you that wishes you didn't wait more than 90 days to inform parents? No, oh, Tony, it would have been a hell of a lot easier. Three days after Denver 7 uncovered details of the security guard's arrest, Superintendent Bull sent this letter to parents, explaining his reason for not immediately telling parents, teachers, staff, and students. Not defending our position, I'm explaining our position. If I've erred, I've erred on the side of trying to take care of a kid. Cherry Creek Superintendent also justified his decision by pointing to the Aurora Police Department for its decision to not issue a public notice of the arrest because investigators apparently believed there were no other victims. But this police report obtained exclusively by Denver 7 Investigates raises doubt about that theory and creates a significant problem for administrators and police. That report seems to lay out that there may be additional victims. That's from February of 2016. That's a police report. Yeah, I've not seen this. The report's title, A Suspicious Occurrence, written more than 13 months before the security guard was arrested. It lists Broderick Lundy as a suspect and includes statements from another student claiming, quote, a school security person having sex with senior girls at Grandview High School, end quote. But lacking any proof, Aurora police closed that case without an arrest. Was the district aware of this incident in February 2016? I, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. The issue. report that was done in 2016, was that provided to the high school? In talking to the officer that authored the report, that in fact he notified school administration. But here's the conflict and confusion between the district and the Aurora Police Department. The district says it never received the written report, a report that might have changed its decision to inform parents. But in the report, the officer wrote, I notified the school of the allegations along with my findings. Was that a written notification or a verbal notification? Uh, I believe it was a verbal notification. There are some commander that say this report should have been provided in writing to the district. Do you disagree? 
No, I don't. There's room for a better process of notification, yes. I would agree with that. So there's accusations of a cover-up and a failed communications process where a critical police report never made it to district administrators. Ultimately, both now provide us a better understanding why parents, students, and staff sat in the dark for 110 days. Schools are in the business of handing out grades. What grade does the school, does the district deserve for the way this was handled? I feel the school failed the parents, so I would give them an F. Has this been a learning process? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Following our uncovering of that critical report, the Cherry Creek School District has made changes. The district now requires anyone who knows about police or human services investigations of a school employee to immediately report that to the district. In the future, they want a paper trail. The Aurora Police Department says it's willing to work with the district. Changes are happening. Powerful stuff. Yeah, got to protect our kids. Nice work, exactly. Thank you, Tony. And our Denver 7 Investigates team is working to undercover, uncover more cases of parents being left in the dark about arrests that could affect their kids. You will see more investigations in the days and weeks to come. And if there is something you think our team should look into, call the Denver 7 Investigates tip line 303-832-TIPS.